West, love the West. What up, peeps? This is Get With It Sports, the place where you get your sports with a little swag. I'm Glass. And I'm Brandon. The best tag team tandem out here in sports talk. About to give you another episode, episode 94 of the Two Cent Pops on Sports, the place where we give you our two cents on the recent topics in the sports world. As always, we want to thank you for taking the time for watching the show. While you're here, go ahead and click the subscribe button to the channel so you can be alerted to all the episodes we have here at the Get With It Sports 2 YouTube channel. Everything good, bro. Everything's just great. Just great. Good morning, right. everybody. Say what? Say, say good morning. Oh, good morning. My fault. Okay. <laughs> well, let me let me remind everybody we are recording on a Thursday, uh, May 30th, 2019. Got a lot of stuff to get into. Definitely NBA, a little NFL, maybe a little MLB. But of course, it jumps off tonight. Thursday night, the NBA Finals, game one between the Toronto Raptors and the Golden State Warriors. We will give you our picks at the end of the show. But first off, let's go jump on the news tape. We had two losses over the weekend of legends in both the NFL, the MLB world. First off, the Green Bay Packers announced Sunday that franchise legend and pro football Hall of Famer Bart Starr died earlier in the day at the age of 85. His health had been failing since he suffered a stroke in 2014. Starr won five NFL championships with the Packers, including Super Bowls one and two, which both saw him named MVP. He played for Green Bay from 1956 to 1971 and coached the team from 1975 to 1983. He was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1977. Stars 16 years spent under center for the Packers have only been matched with Brett Favre. His last appearance at Lambeau Field came the night Favre number was retired in November of 2015. So rest in peace to a great legend in the NFL, even though we Chicago Bear fans, much respect to the legends that, that, was in the, that was in the NFL. He was one of them. Hey, five... Uh, uh championships plus one and two hey that's that's a good feat right there so like i said recipe bar star he was a legend any words bruh yep 15 years in the game that's mm-hmm. not counting school eight years coaching yeah he, he he's definitely an nfl legend as well as a packer legend you know so yeah my respect to bar star and the green bay packers still hate y'all but much respect. <laughs> All right, man. Another death over the weekend. Longtime Major League first baseman and left fielder Bill Buckner died Monday on Memorial Day at the age of 69. Drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers in 1968, Buckner played 22 big league seasons between the Dodgers, Chicago Cubs, Boston Red Sox, California Angels, and Kansas City Royals. Buckner hit 289, 318, 380. Over 2,517 career games with 174 home runs, 498 doubles, and 1,208 RBIs. A one-time All-Star in 1981, he finished among the top 10 in MVP voting in 1981 and 82 while playing for the Cubs. He was a contact machine, too. Uh, He struck out 453 times in 10,033 plate appearances a rate of 4.5%. Uh, 1986 World Series, Buckner committed in the, an infamous error for the Boston Red Sox. Buckner tried to field the ground ball off the bat of New York Mets outfielder Mookie Wilson in the 10th inning of game six. He missed it, and the ball went through his legs, allowing the winning run to score. The Mets went on to win game seven and the series, and the Boston faithful taunted Buckner for years. Buckner eventually moved away from Massachusetts to a ranch in Idaho and later declined to be involved in the 20-year anniversary of that Red Sox team. He did, however, return to Fenway in 2008 at the 2008 home opener. He received a standing ovation and threw out the ceremonial first pitch. 
quote, I really had to, had to forgive, not the fans of Boston per se, but I would have to say in my heart, I had to forgive the media, close quote. For what uh, they put me and my family through, so you know, I've done that and I'm over that. Buckner also ex- exercised those demons in an iconic guest spot on Curb Your Enthusiasm 2011. Once again, rest in peace to a great one, Bill Buckner. 69, that's a very young age, but uh, he had Louis Body dementia, which I think is one of the worst stage of dementia. Uh, still too young, 69 years old. I was, I was shocked when that came up Monday morning. So uh, rest in peace to him. And it's hey, I, you know what? And I agree with a couple of sports casters I heard talk about it on TV and on radio. It's a shame that we still just, I mean, when you say Bill Buckner, that's the first thing you remember him missing the ground ball. Right. Of right. that World Series, because he was a hell of a hitter. Uh, from what I understand, in the 70s and 80s, nobody hit better than him but one person. I think that was Pete Rose. I think he topped uh, uh, Ted Williams in uh, hitting average, or hitting, basically. So, yeah. uh like I say, I th- he was a great player, and you know what? If uh, you know what gets me, you remember this error as if to say nobody else made errors playing this game. You know what I'm saying? And he was the reason why Boston Red Sox lost that lost that series because you still had, I think they still had had an at bat in that game. I think with eleven innings, eleven innings, I think it was, and you still had another game to play. So it wasn't the all, end all be all, you know what I'm saying? So once again, he was a great player. I'm glad he made it in the Hall of Fame. Rest in peace. Give me your two cents, bro. Yeah, it's it's, it's the same thing. Uh, like you were just saying, they they still had opportunities to win that series, you know. Um, could they have ended it? Maybe, you know. But they still have opportunities to win it. And like he was saying, Buckner was saying, you know, the media. You know, they, they just beat it to death. You know, I think they had made it with he, him and his family had to move with the harassments. And, mm-hmm. you know, what the media do is just keep – they won't let the fans – All right, stoking the fire, right. Exactly. So that's what made it made it even worse, you know. And I did see that episode on Curb Enthusiasm. He was on it. That was some funny shit. But, uh, <laughs> cool. yeah, so, yeah, rest in peace, Bill Buck. Yeah, I forgot he was a cubby. Yeah, everybody makes mistakes every now and then. All right, man. Uh, <laughs> you know I got those shots, bro. Yeah, it's and all right. Yeah. Speaking of Cubs, man, did you hear about last night? Yeah. Uh, my I'm thing is with the little girl. Yeah. In case y'all didn't know, I'm just talking like yeah, everybody knew what know what we're talking about. Uh, Wednesday night, Cubs Astros game in uh in Houston. What's his name? Albert. Amor. Amor hit a, a line drive. A fi- well, he fouled the ball. It was a line drive to a little girl. They say they hit her in the face. And I've seen pictures of the little girl. She looked like she was about four. If uh, it hit her. Mm-hmm. And uh, you could tell by the players, fans, the umpires. You know, they, was, they got down on one knee, started crying. This is it was a serious situation for a time. I've heard that she went to hospital for precautionary measures, and I haven't heard anything since then. I take it she's all right. right. But still, yeah, man, that shouldn't happen. Um, I heard people talk about you know they pay good money for them seats, and they don't want to be have a, a, a view obstructing their uh, entertainment or netting rather. I think after last night, they're going to stretch that bad fella all the way to the foul pole. You know, it has to be done. To me, I said, you know, I, of course, I go to, uh, I was going to say Comiskey, game at U.S. No, it's, what is it now? Guaranteed Pitch rate. <laughs> Guar- excuse me? Anyway, guaranteed rate, <laughs> guaranteed rate field. Uh, and I sit along the third, uh, third base line. Now, I think uh, the closest I got down there is seven, seventh row. But the the netting, you can still – I mean, it's okay. If you look at the netting, yes, it's in your way. But if you're looking at the game, 
you kind of like bypass the netting because it's so thick. Yeah, you don't see the net. Yeah, you, you don't pay attention to the netting, man. But it doesn't matter now because after last night, I've heard the umpire say if they don't expand that netting to the foul pole, I'm not umpiring the game. Cause it hurt the the umpire. They were showing pictures of the umpire. They was sh- they was a little shaking up, man. So, uh, yeah, they want to change that. I just want to throw that in there if you want to add on to it. Yeah, I know. Throughout the games, you know they they announce over the PA system that you got to be paying attention to the game because of the balls or whatever. But this one was different because it's a kid. Exactly. Like she really know how to move. Right. You know. Yeah. I'm saying, and you know, they said like they said it was pretty well protected. The ball just found a way up in there. Exactly. Yeah. So it could be one of those just slight incidents or whatever. I I don't know, but yeah, it's sure gonna make everybody look into look mm-hmm. into. You know. They were saying they were saying people that were sitting around the little girl, the father and his little girl. They said they heard yeah. the thump hit it. When it hit the girl, they heard a thump, a loud thump. So, man, dude, nah. Yeah, you know Because you know. you don't know how fast. It could have been 100 miles an hour heading out that way, you know? So, because it got out there quick. It's like as soon as he finished the swing, he looked over, and you could see the back catcher turn his head, and he, you know, he felt a certain type of way. It just got to change, man. So, that's all I'm saying about that. Uh, I don't have too much more in the MLB right now, but let's go ahead. I'll say we jump to the to the NFL real quick. I was going to go to the NBA, but we go to the, the NBA. We got a lot of stuff to talk about in, in the NBA. Let's go to the NFL. The NFL could re- re-evaluate an expansion of the regular season or an increased number of playoff, te- playoff teams during upcoming negotiations for a new collective bargaining agreement. A high-ranking official with one team stated that when some owners – want to expand the regular season from 16 games to 18 games in order to boost revenue. Adding it's unclear how much support such a change would garner from players. Uh, The source also said they suspect the owners will be a little more flexible during talks regarding Commissioner Goodell's disciplinary powers and the league's marijuana policy. Such flexibility could potentially be used to get players support for more games. Owners who want to revisit regular season expansion reportedly believe concessions such as a decreased number of postseason games or an increase in roster size could aid in issue in the issues of player safety. A postseason expansion could serve as an alternative to a longer regular season and would see the number of qualifying teams increase from 12 to 14, including seven from each conference. Only one team in each conference would receive a first-round bye, meaning the NFL would have six first-round playoff games instead of four. The league attempted to lengthen the regular season during the last CBA negotiation, but ultimately backed down due to health concerns. Pledging not to expand it without the approval of the NFL, of the NFL Players Association. The current CBA expires following the 2020 season, and DeMarcus Smith, I'm sorry, and DeMorris Smith, uh, and the NFLPA advised players Tuesday to plan for a work stoppage for at least for a uh, work stoppage of at least one year. And the only problem I have with that last statement is DeMar, DeMar Smith should have said that a year ago at least. Because we talked about that about a year ago that they need to call and tell these players to start saving money. Because in 2020, we might have a strike. Right. Don't wait a year. This is something that you got planned two years ahead of time because so the players can save their money because, you know, the players got kids going to the private schools and all that stuff, you know. So I want to have enough in my treasure chest so I can live pretty well for that one year. But other than that, they're going to they gonna get there. They're going to get the either 18 game season or they're going to get the extra playoff teams, in the, uh, extra team in the playoffs. Guaranteed you that because they've been talking. I heard Roger Goodell or somebody in the NFL keep talking about they're going to try to legalize marijuana or not penalize players that smoke marijuana. And this is bargain. That was a bargaining chip for them to get what they want. Because in order for them to give up something, they're going to have to get some return. I think this is one of the things they're going to get in return. So it will happen. 
matter if it's going to be the 18 games or the extra team in the playoffs, something going to happen. But they, this, this is where the, this is where the players need to stand their ground and don't have stuff happening that where they don't read the fine line. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah. What's your two cents, man? Yeah, this uh, this is kind of tricky. They want to extend the game. The playoffs are out to 18 games. No, they're going to send the regular season. The regular season, right. The regular season is 18 games, which I'm thinking, okay, well, you already got the 18 games if you just cut out two of those preseason games. I think that's what they're going to do. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. Because it was four preseason games, right? Right. They're going to knock it down to two. Okay. Yeah. Okay, if, if that happens now, me with the mar- whole marijuana thing, mm-hmm. I get that. But you only got a handful of players in the league that actually smoke that shit. So what about the ones that don't? Do, is, you, is, do you actually think you got a handful of players, bro? I didn't even know who just retired. One of the long boys, Chris Long. He said he's yeah. I was shocked to hear that. Kind of. <laughs> But still, I think it's more than what people think. They just don't know. It may be, it may be if they're gonna use it as a bargaining chip, you know. It it may be. Yeah, I I don't know. This is this is very interesting, you know, how, how they're gonna do this, you mm-hmm. know. But the whole funny part of this whole statement is, you know, they talk about because they need to increase revenue. You're giving your quarterbacks and players uh, uh, up was almost $200 million. And, you know, where where you short money at? How much is it? It's like, the, well, last I remember, it was $13 billion. The NFL worth, like, how much more money you need? How much revenue do you need? Hey. <laughs> I guess there's, there's never enough money, huh? And like you said, you're giving these quarterbacks – Franchise half your, I do. Do I want to say half? At least a fourth mm. of your earnings. No, man. And like, we, I will not be. I guess I will beat this horse down, even though it's dead. I hear what y'all say, Larry. You know you want them. It's the market. It's the market. Yeah. Like, damn, how high the market got to be? I mean, is there a ceiling to this market? No, evidently not. They get and they created it, you know, mm-hmm. they created it. So no, there's uh well, no, there's no <laughs> there's no selling. <laughs> no, because if a team got it, they're gonna pay it. And now once one player got it, yes, he's gonna say, Okay, boom, that's the market. That's the market. I was making twelve million last year, but now, you know, they done gave old boy seventy four million. And my numbers is way better than here, so that's what I want. We can start talking at 74. Right. You know, right. you jump from 12 to 74 because that's what the market is. Exactly. Because that's, you that's still some, because somebody got paid. Right. Okay. I think the last moneymaker was what, Russell Wilson? Yeah. Is he the highest paid now? I don't know. I think Dak Prescott is next. It's somebody else. I can't remember. Not Derek Carr. Derek Carr resigned his hundred something million. Dak Prescott. Uh, Dak Prescott came. Oh, uh, was because Aaron Rodgers was at top before Russell Wilson. Was. Right, right. But I think Dak Dak Prescott is is up next. And he, don't get me wrong, he deserved good money. But I cannot play. I cannot pay a good quarterback great money. Right. If you know what I'm saying. Free. Yeah. So just because everybody else up in here don't mean you deserve that. Cause you know your numbers, you know your where you where you rank amongst great quarterback. And then, you know, like I say, every now and then you got like a Minnesota uh Kirk Cousins get eighty four million dollar guarantee. I'll put you up against them. I'm not gonna put you up against Russell, uh Wilson. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. Yeah, I know I'm missing one. New Orleans Saints. I can't remember. I'm having a brain fart right now. Yeah. Right. Breeze. I ain't going to put you on them, but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to base you among Kirk Cousins. 
I'll put you in that level, on that tee, right. and work on it from there. And I'm sure Dak is not going <laughs> to – he happy where he at right now. So, it is right. what it is. Back to what we're talking about. I think it's going to happen. You're not – the reason why in the past, the last CBA is because the uproar about safety. Now you find a way, you're going to find a way, you're going to use the marijuana and you're going to use Goodell's power to lessen his power to get what you want from the players. Now, I do agree. I, I like the fact that you get 18 games, two preseason games, but you can't match a preseason game in comparison to a regular season game. Because in the preseason, you don't play your starters. And you don't go all out. You don't go all out in these next two games that you added on from 16 to 18. So you're still messing with player safety. Now, I don't know about this expanding the roster. we got a roster of 52 now, if I ain't mistaken, right? 53. 53. 53. I'm like, how much can you expand? I, get, I, I guess that's a, that's a relief in some way, somehow. But still, I mean, yeah. You having a car crash, what was it, like 30, 30 times a game? Now you go add on two more games? Yeah, you better you better throw away yeah. the marijuana policies. <laughs> they don't need that bad fella, man. It's yeah, crazy. They're gonna, they're, yeah, they expanded. They're going to get the, the expansion of the roster. Mm-hmm. You know, by at least two players. Mm-hmm. You know, at least two players. And yeah, the whole marijuana thing, you know, they go because you know, yeah, they're gonna put the spin on it. They're gonna bring in all the all the medical reasons why it should be in place now. Right. So they they, they gotta make it look good. And but see, it, it can have a snowball effect because now you got the other team, other teams. I mean, sports looking at, start looking at it too. You know. Well, the only really the way they're talking about the only two sports that they penalize you for marijuana is NBA and NFL. They yeah, don't do it in hockey. They don't do it in baseball. They do PEDs yeah. in baseball, but don't do they don't care about the marijuana and the other sports. So mm-hmm. I hear what you're saying, and I it's, I think it's eventually going to be le- I mean legalized throughout the country. So it would it would be idiotic for you to penalize players smoking marijuana when half the country or maybe a third of the country legalized it anyway. You know what I'm saying? So just – they go, the NFL is going to make it work in their favor so they get what they want from these players when it comes to the 2020 CBA. And if they don't br- – I hear you – to me, the more – and we, and we talked about it a year ago, two years ago, the more Smith need to tell the players – I think he sent the email to the agents of the players saying that, you know, have them save their money for the for the CBA just in case we go on strike for a year. That's a, that's a good ploy to let them know, let the NFL know we ain't playing. But this right. should have been done a year ago, two years ago. I guess that's my whole point. Like, mm-hmm. you, you got to give players more than a year to save up their money for their treasure chest. And that's – I think that's basically the, the thing that's rubbed me the wrong way about that. I don't have anything else, anything else in the NFL. We're going to jump into the NBA. All right. This situation with the Lakers, I thought Sacramento Kings was the most dysfunctional team. These Lakers here, um, I mean, Magic Johnson throwing players, throwing everybody under the bus. He's saying he get backstabbed from Rob Palenka and just Rob Palenka. Rob Palenka out here lying. <laughs> Did you see that video? You know, if I didn't see the video, I wouldn't believe it. You heard about the story that Rob Lincoln went to the, I guess they had uh, The Rock Johnson talking to the players in an in a auditorium, right? Yeah. Rob Lincoln stands up, goes in front of the room, and tells the players that uh, he, when he was Kobe Bryant's agent, Kobe Bryant went to go see The Dark Knight. And Kobe wanted... You know, he wanted to have a dinner with Heath Ledger because Heath Ledger played the Joker, you know, the best he ever seen. He was in that zone. He wanted to know how did he get in that zone. So he had uh, Planka uh, set up the dinner, and he set it up, 
and they said Kobe and Heath Ledger had dinner talking about, you know, how he got to that zone about the dark night. But we all know Heath Ledger died six months before the movie came out. <laughs> like, man, do your research for you. Yeah. Can we say he a storyteller? Yeah, <laughs> I will call him a liar. But you know how to make some stories, man. Like, dude, come on, man. Yeah. So you make it Magic Johnson look good. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up with the, with the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Jeannie Buss need to start, like we said before, get your heart out of it. This is a business. Play this business. Don't have all your friends holding positions that they don't need to hold, like uh, Rambus. Linda Rambus, I think her name is. Kurt Rambus' um, uh, wife. What the hell is she doing holding the, holding the office over there? Don't know. Uh I understand why Magic Johnson, I don't like the way that Magic Johnson left, but I understand why he left. Magic Johnson need to make up his mind what he wanted to do. You tell us one thing, like you don't want to let go of all your business, your businesses are worth $600 million. I'm making more money than doing that than being the president. I'm only going to be a part-time president. He asked uh, Jeannie Buss, is it all right if he, she, he, he does it? She said, all right, but then in the next, in the next, uh, uh, press conference, you said you're going to give 150% and you're going to put the your business on the back burner. Like, dude, which one you going to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To me, as a president, if I'm the Lakers, I got to have a president. I can't have a part-time president. I got to yeah. have a president. I got to have a GM. You can't have nothing outside. So I understand you had Magic come up in there and be the face of the franchise and everybody love Magic Johnson. But dude, no, you got to be there, being in the, in the grind with the rest of the team. I mean, with the rest of the management and the organization. Right. Now this story here tickled me. The Los Angeles Lakers continue to dominate headlines for the wrong reasons. Report surfaced Tuesday morning, which details how LeBron James camp wanted the organization to, to fire now former head coach Luke Walton. During a November lunch meeting between Adam Silver and members of James' business team, the superstar agents, the superstar's agent, Rich Paul, approached the league's commissioner to tell him that Walton wasn't the right coach for the Lakers. Silver reportedly shrugged off the comment and asked Paul who, who the right coach would be, to which James' agent apparently replied with Tyron Lue, James' former bench boss with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Rumors persisted throughout the season that Walton's job was, was in jeopardy, but he ultimately didn't part ways with the Lakers until after the 37-45 campaign was complete. Paul had back-channel discussions with media during which he criticized Walton's lineup decisions and minutes distribution. What the hell is the agent talk going to Adam Silver for talking about a head coach in the NBA? I never heard no ish like that before, man. Right. Like Adam Silver's going to do something about it. I'm like, dude, they, that, he, yes, he is the commissioner, but that's, you supposed to talk that up with Jeannie Buss in that organization. It's like you, I get my way this way, so let me go to the top and, and speak my mind. It's crazy in LA, man. I don't <sighs> And, and it ain't looking good to get better no time soon. <laughs> I'm not worried about L.A. They eventually going to get it together. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like they're, they're one of these small market franchises. We want your big markets to be running with, you know, all pistons firing. They just need to clean shop, get a legitimate GM, get a legitimate president, I don't even care about the coach right now, but the front end, you know how they say, how, how the saying go? A uh, fish start riding, riding from the head up. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to put the players in on this. Players don't have nothing to do with this. It, it's management. They got to get the management straight. And, you know, people yeah. crying and didn't like it. Uh, I heard, a, I think his name, Baxter Holmes, brought up a story in ESPN saying that Johnson used intimidation and bullying as a way of showing author authority. Multiple staffers claimed Johnson said they were all replaceable during the gathering 
during a gathering following the 2016-17 season. He then pointed to his office and a stack of resumes he had sitting on his desk, which uh, one coaching staff member described as shock. Can we say uh, y'all too soft? To me, all right. Bullying, <laughs> intimidation. If my let me let me do a little research real quick to the Los Angeles Lakers. Let me get let me make sure I get the right franchise. I think I said it before. The I think the sixty five years the Lakers been existed been in existence. They missed the playoff five times. They missed the playoffs the last six, last six years. I mean, what else do we have to talk about? The, the 65 years, you missed the playoffs five times, but in the last six years, you haven't made the playoffs. So what do you think? It only have to be Magic Johnson. It could be me. I'm coming up in there telling y'all, all y'all could be fired if we right. don't get this straight. You finished... Let me get this. Let me make okay. Last six years one, two, three, four, five, six. Is there, there's 82 games to the season 2013 14, 27 55. Next year, 21 61. Next year, 17 65. I think the following year is when Magic came up there. And there was 26 56. 26 and 56. Last year was 17 65. You think I'm come up in there with cupcakes, right? I'm coming up in there and find everybody that I think need to be fired. If you ain't getting anything right, you gone. I can find somebody to replace you. So what you think he was going to do? He ain't going to pat you on the back. You ain't made the playoffs in six years. It's the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> it's like, what? come on now. I don't, I don't call that intimidation. I call that put my foot down, let y'all know y'all need to get off your asses and do some work. And that's what it was. Then they was talking about this one lady had anxiety attacks and she'd been there for 20 years working and she had to quit. You couldn't get a, I think she was in charge of, uh, what was it? She was in charge of having driver, having a driver pick up a college recruit, uh, not a college recruit, but a, a, a draftee. And it didn't happen. That was your only job. You have nothing else to do in that organization but make sure people get picked up where they need to get picked up. Yes, I'm calling you out too. Get you. How, how come this man didn't get picked up? I'm, we trying to drive people and you can't even pick them up from the airport? Yeah, right. I'm putting my foot in your ass too. Yeah. So I, yeah. there's everybody to blame on this one. Uh, Jeannie Buss, uh, Magic Johnson, Rob Planka. <sighs> Anybody in management, y'all, y'all need to get this stuff straight. Okay, I think I ran it too long. Go ahead, give me your two cents, bro. <laughs> I think you more than summed it up, you know, from from the top to the bottom, you know. And yeah, nobody liked how Magic did it. Me personally, I I don't care one way or the other. I don't either. I can't stand the Lakers, but right, but he did it, you know, and. You know, it, it probably came off like that because, like you said, when he realized he couldn't fire nobody, I mean, coach, okay, fucking, uh, he was pissed, you mm-hmm. know. That's why he walked straight past our office and ran into the reporters. Uh, was that calculated? I don't know. You know, we don't know that. But it, that's how it happened. That's how it went down or whatever. And that's that's where we stand today. So, yeah, it's it's – it's always two sides to every story. And I'm more inclined to believe a lot of it what Magic is talking about. Just because us as fans just watching the game and watching what's been transpired on the court, you know, and, you know, some of the behind the scenes, you know, thing as far as how the hiring process is going now, whatever, you know. So it's a whole lot. It got a lot more questions than answers right now. Mm-hmm. And they got a long way to go. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Uh, they got good, good stuff put in place. It's, to me, I'm looking at their record 37.45 was last year. It might be the same record next year. To me, it takes three years to get stuff established, 
and they had, they don't they don't even have the foundation established yet. They only had the the the, the uh, management established. So it's gonna be another down year. I'm not gonna say they're gonna stay down there for long, but you can't expect much this next year because hell, we talked about it a couple of episodes ago. What if you don't get one of these top twenty top twenty free agents? What if you what if you don't get a Kawhi, a Kyrie, a Clay, uh, what's the other K? Kemba. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're missing all the you're missing top ten of the free agents to match up with LeBron. That's why I say it's not far fetched for me to tell you maybe we need to trade LeBron. Because people might not be coming. They're, I'm not even gonna say LeBron is the reason why they ain't coming. Your organization ain't shit. Management right. up. So that might be the reason why they ain't coming. You already got the players that you already have kind of kind of messed up with the AD situation last year. They thought they was going to get traded. You got a lot of things. You got a lot of fires to put out before they become relevant again. A lot. Yeah, okay. So yeah. Uh, let's move on over to the Houston Rockets. News came out, I think it was yesterday. Uh, General Manager Daryl Morey is showing an aggressive desire to improve the team's roster and will make all players and draft picks available in trade talks this offseason. It was added that while it's hard to imagine a scenario involving James Harden, point guard Chris Paul could be moved could be moved should the right offer be presented. The Rockets have already made significant cuts to their coaching staff since being eliminated, including parting ways with defensive ace Jeff Bedelic and key, uh, key player development coach Irv Rowland. The organization is also reportedly pursuing former Cleveland Cavaliers head coach Tyron Lue for Mike D'Antoni's staff. Meanwhile, Houston has little wiggle room in its cap sheet after heavily, inv- heavily, excuse me, heavily investing in Harden. Four years, $170 million extension signed in 2017. Chris Paul has a four-year, $160 million extension inked in 2018. And Clint Capella got a five-year, $90 million deal agreed uh, to in 2018. Then the 34-year-old Chris Paul could be especially difficult with his contract set to get set to a guarantee, set to guarantee him $444.2 million for 2021-2022. He ain't 40, nobody picking that up, man. Forty-four point two million. Forty-four point two million, man. Please, he's thirty-four years old. Uh, however, Maury has a history of thinking outside the box when it comes to trades that keep the Rockets competitive, including including when he initially acquired Paul in two thousand seventeen, dealing seven players and a draft pick for an all, for the All Star. This year, Rockets failed to advance past the Golden State Warriors in the playoffs for the second straight season and the fourth time in five campaigns. <laughs> Man, okay. There's a lot in that situation right there. I say that Daryl Morey is one of the most outside, outside the box thinking managers in the league. I'll put him up there. Now, I like that in him. The fact mm-hmm. that he will change it up, because you know how the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. He ain't with that. You know, it, it ain't working. We try. We got to try something else. I the Where he fails me is what he did with Chris, with the Chris Paul trade. He You signed him for four years. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, four years, $160 million? And he's accident prone, number one. Number two, his age. Ain't nobody going to take that contract. And no. number three, let's keep it real. You trying to beat the Golden State Warriors, right? The Golden State Warriors had problems in the – let me look on my board – in the first round against an eighth-seeded Clipper team. Who was giving them flux? Patrick Beverly? Lou Williams, and uh, what's that kid's name? Uh, Harrell. The center, or power forward. Okay. The Houston Rockets had them. But they got rid of them, four other players, and, and, and the draft picks for Chris Paul. Imagine if they had, if, if James Harden had Lou Williams, Harrell, and uh, 
Patrick Beverly still on that team. I think Golden State would have had problems. But let's not forget, you went six games with Golden State, so it really wasn't a fail. To me, you just wait, you just faced them in what the second round? Uh yeah, the second round. And you took them six games. So really, really wasn't that bad. But he I think Mo Maury is the type of person like, we need to change stuff. Try changing the head coach. <laughs> I think because he was so offensive, he's an offensive minded coach that doesn't really dwell on defense. That's where your problem is. I like D'Antoni, and his stuff is showtime and everything, but it doesn't win you championships, as you could tell. You know, I think they had the best record last year, if I'm mistaken, Houston Rockets. So it's like he gets you there during the season. It's the postseason where you have problems. But then wasn't that, like I said, once again, I understand changes every now and then. I think during, I'm, I'm going to say it right now, the top three, my top three general managers, Dale Morey, uh, Musayu Jiri from Toronto Raptors, and Danny Ainge. Because they change the stuff to try to find, try to make the pieces fit. Now, with Ujiri, I had no problem with the. Okay, let me run this by you. First, I'm going to tell you this. I had no problem with him with them trading. It was shocking that you traded uh, DeRosa for Leonard for a one time, uh, one time rental. You took a chance on that one. And where we at now? To the finals. So I'm going to ask you if that's a success or, or, or not a success in a minute. Danny Ainge, he'll change. He'll tra he, it's all business for him. Look what he did to, uh, I can't remember the little guy's name, Isaiah Thomas. Mm -hmm. he, was, he, was, he was the heart of the city. But psh, you, you, accident, you, you accident prone, you got a bad hip, we got to get rid of you, man. I'm trying to win championships, trying to get this team loaded. So I have no problem with people thinking outside the box, as they say. Now let me run this by you real quick, bro. Okay. I, on Twitter. Our uh, Urban Arena partner, Diego from AA Sports, we was going, we wasn't having an argument or debate, nothing. We was just going back and forth. He started with uh, this tweet I'm pressing pause on the Kawhi trade being an ultimate success just for getting to the finals. Because if they lose and he still leaves, what exactly did the baby dinos, baby dinos win? I said, okay, the ultimate success might be too strong, but I get it. You got one year super. You got a one year superstar rental, and then that year you made it to the NBA Finals and right. took yourself off the seven teams, never making it to the making it to that point, which is the Denver Nuggets, Clippers, Timberwolves, Grizzlies, Hornets, and Pelicans. Okay. So was it worth it? Okay, let me go finish this off. Somebody in, somebody else tried to jump in talking about Kawhi. Shout out to Vulcan on Twitter. He's come into my Kawhi's legacy. So, so for Kawhi legacy, he would have been better off just losing to the Bucks, so as not to get a blemish on his resume. I had to reel him back in. Like we're not talking about Kawhi's legacy. We talked about Ujiri's trade. Like right. let's stay on track. Don't try to add stuff in. That's what I said. But he said if Kawhi leaves, so uh, Vulcan said this. This was the only way we were ever going to show people. You can win here, so yes, even if they lose, it will be it will be successful. Plus, this is the best free agency class. So if he goes, we have a legit shot to get someone else. Diego ended off with, "If Kawhi leaves, who do they have a real shot of getting?" Which I understand. And Vulcan said, "Not even sure. If they win the chip, it might attract someone, or could, or could Masai make another trade day." For AD, so try to get Anthony Davis. Okay, that's a little, that's a far that's far fetch. <laughs> Be happy with what you got, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I thought that was a good thing, you know. Do, all right, let me ask you this: to Diego's question, do you think the the Kawhi Leonard trade is successful, even if they lose and or he leaves to go to another team? Would you think the trade that he made with DeRozan a successful trade. Um. Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. 
because he they brought him there to get get them where they are right now. Exactly. So you got to be in it to have a shot, and they in it, so they have a shot. Right. So that's that's the first part of the deal. The second part is to keep him. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you keep him? Success. Success is the biggest bargaining chip. Right. The teams in the NBA Finals. Right. Okay. So that's that's one one plus. He's he's still healthy. Mm -hmm. cool. You know, so and you know, whether they win or lose, well, let's just say they lose. Okay. You know, they gonna, you know, you reevaluate how we got here. What you know, were we short a guy? Or did we just not execute or whatever? You know, things think that may it may not may be fixable or whatever. But yeah, the whole deal was the Rosen trade or whatever. Yeah, it was success because they they couldn't get this far without them. Mm -hmm. They had the Rosen, they didn't mm -hmm. get this far. You know, so the trade did exactly what they was it was supposed to do, give them a shot, and they got it. Totally agree. Totally agree. To me, for the simple fact. That you made it to the finals the first year you got them is a success. Because was just like I said, I just wrote uh, there were seven teams that never made it to the NBA finals. And we start from the from the team that's been in the league the longest to the to the latest. Denver Nuggets, from 1967. You haven't made it to the finals. The Los Angeles Clippers from the 70s. You haven't made it to the finals. Charlotte Hornets from 88. Minnesota Timberwolves from 89. The then now Toronto Raptors is 95. Now they made it to the playoffs, so they off the list. The Vancouver slash Memphis Grizzlies since 95. And New Orleans Pelicans since 02. You off that list. So uh, we got you, we brought you here to make it to, to make it to the championship. We made it to the championship. I mean, what else do you do you ask? And like you said, not knocking DeMar DeRozan. And yes, of course, you might say, okay, since LeBron's not in the East. You still could have had a shot. I don't. I can't say you would have because there's many times where uh, Kawhi Leonard put that team on their back during this during the postseason, and you wouldn't have won some of these games that you won if he didn't score thirty some points and and block shots and got rebounds. You know what I'm saying? Right. There was times with Kawhi Leonard. Not, not I ain't throwing shade on Kawhi Leonard, but he got a bad thumb. There was a couple of games. There was that one first game against the Bucks. He scored thirty points, but then you didn't get nothing from Pascal, uh, Pascal Siakam. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, if anything was constant on that team, it was Kawhi Leonard, and you needed that. So I, I to me, I think it was a successful trade. Even though you get him for a year, you playing to, you playing tonight against Golden State for the finals. Yeah, nothing else to talk about. And like I agree with Vulcan from Twitter. With them being in the finals, you might show other free agents. You know what? Maybe that's that might be the place to be. You know what I'm saying? I do. I agree with them firing Dwayne Casey and bringing in Nick Nurse. No, I think you would have better. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. I think you would have the same result with Dwayne Casey. But that's neither here nor there. We're going with the now. So, I, okay, I agree with you. We both agree it was success. And my right. next question to you, bro, and it's on the notes. Is Kawhi Leonard the best Toronto Raptor player ever? <laughs> you know, he very well could be. He's mm -hmm. not the most exciting. Oh. We, I I leave that to Vince Carter. <laughs> right. You know, True. Mm -hmm. So I mean, um Chris Boss wasn't nothing exciting about him. Kyle. He may be he may be the most best overall player on this list, you know. Okay. From both sides, both sides of the ball. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, Hell, he's the best two way player in the league. Period. Let right. alone the team. So I mean, shit, he boring as hell to watch, but <laughs> he get it done. Press conference know? ain't worth shit. I agree. I agree. You ain't get nothing. Man. He a robot, he, man. He ain't finna do nothing to excite you or make mm -hmm. you. You know, you get your remote and replay that. So, what the fuck he just say? You know, he ain't finna do that. You know, right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's calculated, and you know that's his games, like his interviews or whatever. So, hey, you know, yeah, he could be that best 
He could be the best to wrap the player in the history of the franchise. Yeah, I would give it to him. Listen. Right now, I mean, but, I mean, it's a year. We'll right. See. That's the yeah. thing. It's yeah, I got you. But man, I get you could everybody could be prisoner of the moment. I might be prisoner of the moment. Prisoner of the moment. Hell yeah, he's the best rapper ever <laughs> in team history. Because of <laughs> nothing against Kyle Lowry, DeMar. Now this list I got up here is how they ranked him uh on the team yeah. website. They actually have Kyle Lowry number one, Chris Bosch number two, DeMar DeRozan number three, Vince Carter number four. Jonas Valanciunas, number five. Okay, Nothing against all them players. I'm I'm cool. I'm I'm cool with Kyle Lowry and Demar Derozan being top in top three. You know what I'm saying? Because in 2015, 16 is the first time they, they broke 50. I'm sorry, not the first time, but they they was 56 and 26. 17, 18, they was. 59-23, which is last year. And this year, they're 58-24. Right. So they, they, they've been – they usually was in 20s, 30s, and 40s. Now they graduate. Even with Chris Bosh on the team, they wasn't doing that well. Vince Carter on the team, they wasn't doing that well. So there's a group of Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, Jonas Valanciunas. I see why they're in top five because the last three, four years, they've been up there uh, record-wise. So, but with that being said, yeah. y'all this y'all made the finals this year. Y'all wouldn't have made the finals like Kawhi Leonard. Uh, it could be prison the moment. I'm fine with that. But yeah, Kawhi Leonard is your best Toronto Raptor player ever. Okay. Tell us what y'all think, people, on Twitter, <laughs> down here in the comments. Let us know what you think about about what we said. So, all right, man. Uh, what you think about what Dwayne, uh, what Dwayne, what Drake is doing out here, man? Being, I understand you. That's your team. You're the ambassador of the team. You got a build. You got. Uh, I think they run in the clothing line. They got to build a practice facility uh, with the OVO aisle on it. So I understand it. But Drake, sit your ass on the, on the bench, man. Enjoy. Sit your ass in your seat and, and enjoy the game. What I mean by that, the NBA spoke to Toronto Raptors during the Eastern Conference Finals about the rap the rappers sideline antics. Drake's behavior became quite the talking point during this round when cameras caught him laughing and strumming an air guitar after Milwaukee Bucks star Giannis Antetokounmpo missed a free throw. The Greek Freak's rep called Drake's action disrespectful, while Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer said there was no place for his shenanigans. This isn't the first time Raptors Global Ambassador has been in hot water with the lead. The NBA warned Drake, during last year's playoffs, after he got into a verbal post-game exchange with then Cleveland Cavaliers center Kendrick Perkins, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver issued a league-wide memo in March reminding teams to, teams to state and enforce their fan conduct conduct policies. Game one of the NBA Finals is Thursday night in Toronto's Social Bank Arena. Once again, Drake, you ain't the first ambassador of a team. You have Jack Nicholson of the Lakers. You got uh, Spike Lee of the New York Knicks. He never did the shit that you're doing right now. He all over the place. He giving he giving Nick Nurse, uh, the head coach of the Toronto Raptors, neck massage, and he all over the floor. No nah, man, yeah, he's doing he's doing too much. He's doing too much. Yeah, he, he needs to fall back. Yeah, exactly. He's becoming a distraction. Exactly. You know, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I totally agree. Uh, they need to, I don't know what they could do, find them, whatever. We just need to come, especially in the finals. I ain't expecting all this in the finals. And don't get me wrong. Um, what's his name? Draymond Green? <laughs> he might even, like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take a fine on this one. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this mug right here. If you come out on this floor talking crazy to me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so. All right, bro. Let's end the show with our picks. We got the NBA Finals, 2019 NBA Finals. We know the teams, Toronto Raptors coming out the East. Yeah, yeah. And Golden State Warriors coming out the West. And it's the first time in this five-year stint of the Golden State Warriors where they are not the home team. Mm. I was shocked. I forgot all about that. They don't have home court advantage. They got go to go up to Toronto tonight. They might not. They they will not have KD. 
I don't think they have KD game one, game two. I just seen on on the news that DeMar, uh, DeMarcus Cousin is activated. So they got DeMarcus okay. Cousin. So, bro, I'm going to let you go first. Who you got and how many games? I'm going to go, with, although they don't have home court uh, this year, I'm going to go with Golden State Warriors. I think, to sum it up, let me just sum it up real quick. This is the best way to sum this up. All right. Right now, without Durant on the team, Golden State Warriors have still three possible NBA final MVPs on the roster. They got three with fucking uh, Clay, Steph, and Draymond. Mm-hmm. I agree. And, and, and let's not forget, hell, Iguodala won the MVP once, you yep. know, so. They got they got multiple MVP candidates. Toronto mm-hmm. got one, you know, and <laughs> you know that's that's first and foremost. Secondly, they've been here, you yeah, know. Exactly. They they not gonna get overwhelmed by what's going on or whatever. Uh, Toronto, they got Kawhi again. Everything is Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi. Kawhi go. Kawhi got to be Kawhi, just like LeBron had to be LeBron every night. He has to be – Kawhi had to put up 30-plus every night. That's just to have a shot. That's just to have a shot at the you know, and, and the bench got to – and if they have all that all that comes into play, I still give Toronto one game. Mm. One game. So, I'm taking the Ghost State Warriors in five. Mm. Okay. Be, yeah. Ah right, man, I almost want to say I duplicate everything you just said. I totally agree. In Toronto, Toronto, congratulations! Right, Great applause. You made it there. I'm I'm proud of you. But you know, like it, I'll just put you like this. You know that movie Glory? Yeah. When the Union soldiers got to the fort. Battling all through the fort to get to the, get to the middle of the fort, and they got there. And them fools had them cannons waiting for them. That's what we got here. You did all that battling in the east. You made it, made it to the to the, to the Eastern Conference Finals. You won the Eastern Conference Finals. You going to the going to the finals. You about to get blitz. You about to get buzz off. All right. With the Golden State Warriors, I totally agree with you. With KD, how did I say last week? With KD. You're a juggernaut. Without KD, mm. you're still a damn beast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just all you did was just find another way to recoup that old match you had the first two two uh, championships you won. That's where we are right now. You seen in the last series against the Blazers, the Blazers didn't have a chance, man. And I'm not saying the uh, Raptors don't have a chance. You have Kawhi Leonard, and you have home court advantage. How long that lasts, we don't know. I'm giving game one. It's going to be high. Right. It's very well win game one. You right? might smack him in the face. And cool. I'll be shocked if you get game two. But then again, they're going to, it's going to be like, okay, we got two losses on our belt. Bring in the Kraken. AKA <laughs> yeah. KD. <laughs> and it's going to be all over, you know. So however the, however the scenario go, however the narrative go, when the, when the dust settle, I'll agree with you, bro. I got Warriors in, in five. At most six, but I'm gonna go with five. People at work been arguing with me about six. Oh, you gotta give you gotta give the Raptors more credit. I'm giving them credit because they made it there. All right. You, you get a gentleman sweep. That's much, as much as I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna watch the game one. See how interesting it's gonna be. It's gonna it's tonight. I think it's at seven o'clock. I'm gonna see how it rolls. I think game one gonna be hype. But then it, once once the, the hype is gone and reality sets in, we know who's gonna win this one. Now. If and when the Golden State Warriors win this one, that's four championships in five years. Dynasty? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. All right. You know what? Okay. You do have some sense, bro. I know that's why I'll be messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, people. That's There you have it. Those are picks. Uh, me and Brandon both go with the Warriors in five. So tell us what you think. Put it down in the comments. You can hit us up on Twitter. Unless you have anything else, bro, we covered a lot in this in this hour. If you have anything else, we will be in the shop. 
good. Yep, we're good. All right, man. The crew here at Get With the Sports want to thank you for taking the time to watch the Two Cent Positive Sports Podcast. Once again, while you're here, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you can be alerted to all the new episodes we have here at the Get With the Sports 2 YouTube channel. You can find us on Twitter, me, at Get With the Sports, my partner Crime here, LEB412. Uh, you can read our posts. I got I got posts. I haven't through posts up in a long time. But we will have posts on our blog page at GetWithSports.wordpress.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at GetWithSports. Uh, and you can contact us via email at GetWithSports2 at gmail.com. Uh, shout out to the Urban Arena affiliate, JB, Big Q, Bernie B at give at uh give with the sports at Team Boy TV uh, and our partners at AA Sports Straight Sports No Chaser Diego Brislikov the Black Dominican Russia and Uncle Hate the six foot and under post up champ Urban Arena crew can give you what you need every week for your sports fix while you're on the globe so check them check those two out that's Team Boy TV AA Sports. As always, this is your boy, Glass. And I'm Brandon. The best tag team channel out here on Sports Talk. Be good, be safe, get with it. Peace.